Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with our final budget deck tech of 2022. But this is actually going to be the beginning of another series of small deck techs that are going to be, for lack of a better term, devoted to a specific card in each of the color combinations out there. This deck is actually going to be focusing on, of course, one specific card that allows us to even make this style of deck. And the card we're talking about is, to no surprise, Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Let's talk about, again, this card before we go into, again, what our game plan is trying to do. So Nykthos Shrine to Nyx is a legendary land that allows us to tap for one colorless. For two, and tapping it, you could choose a color and add an amount of mana to that color equal to the devotion of that color. For those of you who are a little unaware of how devotion works, it says, you can see right here, your devotion to a color is the number of mana symbols of that color in the mana cost of permanence you control. In other words, to kind of shorten that whole little word sandwich is basically for every little mana symbol you see at the top right here will equal out to an extra piece of devotion. And of course, that means that our deck is going to be chock full of cards that are just fully dedicated to red mana. So in order for us to maximize the amount of value out of Nykthos, that's what we're trying to do. But of course, the twist is we're working with a budget. For those of you out there that maybe are fascinated with Devotion decks, but maybe don't want to invest all of those rares and mythics into it, or I should I say, if you're not devoted enough, eh? Eh? Boo! You stink! into building this with all of that investment, I would recommend you want to start here just to kind of dip your toes into it. Starting with the one drops, you have Kumamo faces Kakazan and Spikefield Hazard. You're mostly playing these just to do the one point of burn damage. However, Spikefield Hazard comes in a pinch if you need to add an extra land on the battlefield. Kumamo is great in any part of the game. You've seen this card many times already. So again, it's just an auto include, I would say, in this deck. But though, of course, they also provide something very important with that one point of damage they can do, which we'll talk about in just a second. Wily Goblin and Burning Tree Emissary are in the two drop slot. Burning Tree Emissary just helps us kind of continually ramp into what we need. It is a little awkward because it only gives us a red and a green mana source as opposed to two red, but there are ways to kind of circumvent this even with Nikto Shrine to Nyx out. Wily Goblin, two mana, and of course it creates a treasure token. Just basically helps us ramp and of course fills out our devotion. We have in the three drop slot Plundering Barbarian. Same thing as the Wily Goblin, it just creates a token for us. However, we can destroy an artifact in a pinch if we absolutely have to. An entire set of Annex Harden in the Forge. Same thing, this also really synergizes with the Devotion Plan, and if it does get blown up, we can make some Seder tokens, hopefully to go wide if we have to. Goblin Chain Whirler, this is a fantastic card. It deals a little bit of extra damage to each creature and Planeswalker and opponent controls. Also pings our opponent for one as well. Sometimes, again, that's also very helpful to close out the game. But again, three of Rand's sources at the top means this is an auto-include into this deck. As far as the four drop slot, we have Fanatic Amogwis. This is actually one of the main things that we want to use in order to take advantage of our game plan. Fanatic Amogwis right here is a four mana Minotaur Shaman where it enters the battlefield and deals damage equal to the Devotion of Red. So if we have enough Red sources out, the Fanatic sometimes can never just burn out our opponent on the spot. Leilana Combustion, this enchantment basically, you don't want to really cast it for its actual cost. You hopefully want to have it in your opening hand and throw it out onto the battlefield for free so it can kind of start ramping us with Nykthos. Wildfire Edelm Lentil, this is probably a card no one ever even remembers, probably just draft chaff, but it actually provides a decent service in our deck. So this elemental creature allows us to then pump our entire team for plus one whenever an opponent is dealt non-combat damage. In other words, when our Goblin Chain Alert pings our opponent, Spyfield Hazard pings our opponent, or Kuma Mamo basically does that. It pumps up the entire team, and hopefully this gives us just a little extra power just to smash our opponent to pieces. In the five drop slot, we only have two copies of Pugnacious Pugilist. So in other words, this card, whenever it attacks, we can make a tapped and attacking 1-1 one, one red devil creature token, where when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Not that that's anything major for us, but it doesn't hurt to have a little extra damage just to hopefully finish off our opponent. You can also blitz it in for a cheaper cost of only three. But if we can't burn out our opponent with Fanatic Amogwis, we have our plan B, which is Embercleave. Embercleave is our six mana legendary artifact. It gives us also two more points to devotion. And if we're going wide with our deck, we can hopefully get it in for cheaper whereas you've seen it before it does gives our creature plus one plus one double strike and trample it hopefully just closes out the game ideally if you could put ember cleave on the annex hardened at the forge you mostly just win the game on the spot otherwise the other card i didn't mention earlier this is more like a plan c to the deck kazul's fury think of this as more like 
an extra copy of Fanatic of Mogwis. Basically, you sacrifice any one of our creatures and it deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. Sometimes you might have an extra annex that you can then have it pumped up, then sack it after it does its damage, then use Cthulhu's Fury to hopefully burn out your opponent. Sometimes you might want to just sack something early on, like an extra Wily Goblin, to get the extra ping, and then get Wildfire Elemental's trigger to go off. But basically, that's it for us. If we're basically playing everything on curve as much as possible. Hopefully, we have enough symbols out there where we can either get an Ember Cleaver cheaper, we can otherwise burn out our opponent with Fanatic Mogwis. And the other thing I forgot to mention with Leyline of Combustion is hopefully we can do a little extra burn damage. Also, if this triggers off with Wildfire, it's actually hilarious because sometimes you're your opponent forgets that that's a thing and then hopefully that gives us just enough also power to hopefully finish off our opponent but otherwise that's basically the core of the deck as far as your mana base since we are budget we're doing 13 mountains and four Robinop ruins same thing Robinop ruins does trigger off with wildfire elemental and it's a fantastic when it does you only have three shrines of nykthos but if you can you can do a whole place that that's actually perfectly fine for this deck i only picked three because i wanted to maintain the budget as much as we can but at the same time it is some can be a little awkward to have extra nykthoses However, if you do tap correctly, make sure you go full control for this. But if you do tap correctly for Nykthos, you can tap it, then put in your next one. It'll then, of course, legendary rule out the old one, but then you can tap the other one to give yourself even more mana if you absolutely have to. So consider that, of course, just a thought. For your sideboard, you're just going to be mostly a hodgepodge of specific burn spells just to take out creatures that we just can't deal with in the main deck. Chandra's Defeat for enemy red decks, and End the Festivities to kind of get rid of mostly tokens, and also does a little extra point of burn damage, which triggers off Wildfire Elemental. Burning Hands are for those enemy mono green devotion decks that go really big, so this has, does enough damage where you should be able to take out anything on the field. So Guy Lantern for as your graveyard hate. Fry is going to be, again, for mostly spirit decks and other mono white decks like Angels out there. Searing Blood, same thing. It kind of does a little extra damage, not only to the creature, but also does three damage to the creature's controller, which hopefully burns out our opponent just enough. And then finally, on the end, we have Tybalt Rackus Indicator. We have do a lot of life gain decks out there. So Tybalt, although it doesn't provide us a lot of devotion, still turns off their life gain, which can be critical to getting a victory against our opponent. But before we continue, if you like any of the content that I do, all I ask for you to do is please give a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the deck techs, booster pack openings, gameplay and so much more. Oh, and after we're done with our matches, I'll have some final thoughts on our deck at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and fire up the deck that we've just gone over and get started. And here we go, everybody, our mono red devotion deck. All right, I think we're going to keep this. Oh, well, Leyline Combustion comes out immediately. We have some Chain Whirlers and an Annex. All right, let's see what our opponent's going to do. Expiring Vantage, Toolcraft Exemplar. All right, looks like they're going to be an artifact deck, so let's throw out our Mountain and let's... We'll wait. We're going to wait. Let's see what they get out. All right, another land for opponents. Spring Leaf Drum. Yep. Let's go ahead. Let's get rid of that Toolcraft Exemplar now. Exiled off the game. Spring Leaf Drum won't do much for now. Ooh, we got our Fanatic Among Us. All right, we're uh, we're getting close to where we want to be. We just gotta make sure our opponent does not overwhelm us right now. Genius Smith. All right, digging for an artifact. They get Portable Hole, which thankfully actually doesn't affect anything we have. Nice. Get that mountain out. Goblin Chain Whirler. Taking out that creature. Alright. Uh, opponent is thinking. They're getting out another ingenious smith. A little annoying, but that's fine. They got another portable hole, but thankfully it doesn't again, it doesn't really do anything for us. They're putting it out there mostly just for value, it looks like. Okay. <laughs> We've got all of our chain rollers. This is actually pretty sweet. So let's go attack. Down to 16. Uh let's throw out. Let's throw out Chain Whirler number two. Even if our opponent tries to attack, now we have a blocker. Srom. Srom's still a pretty powerful card, but do they have anything to trigger it right now? Uh, opponents? Portable Hole coming down. Again, no value, just pumping up their Ingenious Smith. Ooh, okay. We have two Annex. All right, let's... Let's put out Chain Whirler number three. All right, all three. Go swinging. Down to eight. All right, and we are in range of our Fanatic of Mogwis. Nice. Just need that extra land, and then we got this. Cool crap exemplar. It pumped itself, but it doesn't attack yet. It's an, okay, Pugnation Fusion. We need another land, but for now, how do we do this? Uh, okay, Kumamo. Things are opponent for one. You know what? We're swinging. High speed hoverbike. 
It ta All right. Well, it still pings our opponent. <laughs> it triggers it still. So our opponent is able to at least get one block here, which is annoying. That's fine. Not something I worry about. All right. They're down to two. We literally just need one more land, and we get got the win. All right, opponent. Do you have anything left? Another land. Extraction specialist. That's not enough, though. Again, we just need a land. Zerom comes back, which is annoying, but not that bad. There it is. Nick those. Oh, this is perfect. Let's get all that mana. Let's put an Annex. Yeah. You know what? I feel like being that person today. Replacing on the Annex, which is a 12-4, but let's just now finish it off and just be a douche to our opponent. <laughs> yes. That's it, opponent. That's it. You got nothing. Oh, yeah. That's basically it, folks. That's the dream. Perfect. All right, everybody. Again, we have our mono red devotion deck on a budget, and we are kind of close to where we want to be at. We just need another red source so we can activate Nykthos, but we're going to keep it. I'm going to trust that we can get our red source. Okay, our opponent is playing red. They are playing... Oh, okay. An aggro deck? Or is it a cavalcade deck? Hmm, we'll see. Okay, so we got our mountain. Nice. So we might be able to ramp exactly where we want to be at. Fanatic. Okay, maybe they're a cavalcade deck. This will be interesting. Mountain. Let's go Wily Goblin. Even if they blow it up, that's fine. We just need that ramp. Mamo faces Kakazan. Opponent. Do they sack the Firebrand? They do not. Okay, that's fine. We'll take it. We can come back. Ooh, okay. We got our payoff. Okay, so. Nick those. Burning Tree Emissary. Make some mana. We then convert that into red. We have Pugnacious Pugilist. All right. Swing for one. <laughs> Down to 19. All right. We're looking pretty good here. Well, four parts a decent beefy thing. And even with our opponent getting another red source, I don't think they have in their main deck something that takes out Pugnacious Pugilist. So we should be good to block. Fanatical Fiber Brand number two. Okay. It's fine. But now we can hold down the fort. Not. Okay. And let's see. Mountain again. Make more mana. Oh, yeah. This is what you want to do with the deck. Plundering Barbarian. We will make a treasure. Plundering Barbarian number two. Make another treasure. So, how do we do this? We're going to wait. They're only on one land. So they're getting mana screwed right now, but we're Unless we can take advantage of that. Okay, so they did get their next source. They go swinging. I'm guessing they might have an Ember Cleave already. Let's see if they do. Yep, there it is. As I figured. <laughs> okay. It goes on to Firebrand. We're down to four. Can we get there? Let's see. Okay, I think we attack first. Make a token. Down to seven. Oh, wow! This is perfect! Yeah! Boom, baby. There you go. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was perfect. That's what you want to do. Okay, so our opponent is playing a mono red aggro deck that's super low to the ground. We can do end the festivities. That's perfect for this deck. Chandra's defeat is cheap, and we can really take advantage of that. Searing blood. Uh, let's see. What do we not want? We want to also stay low to the ground because our opponent might not... Pugnacious Pugilist comes out. Trim one Wildfire Elemental. I don't think Kumamo is going to help us out here too much, so we'll drop those. Actually, take out Kazool's Fury. We don't need that. Go up two Kumamos. This should be okay? Let me drop instead of Tybalt. Maybe one Plundering Warrior and put in a Tybalt? Just so we can make some tokens? I'll try that. Okay, and let's see what we got. Ooh, we got the End of Festivities already. Beautiful. Kumamo Face Kakazan, Burning Tree Amethyst. I think this is good. I think we can beat our opponent with this also put in their Kumano. So whatever they bring in is going to be a bit of an, an annoying thing to deal with, but that's okay. We also will ping them. Alright, what do they bring in? 
Burning Tree. Okay, so they actually do have their more powerful ramp on hand. But they didn't... <laughs> they burned it up, too. So... Well, I mean... <laughs> actually, we're not much better. <clears throat> so, we're like, we're, like, mirroring our opponent right now, which is hilarious. It's like that Spider-Man meme. Okay, opponent's got their mana out. Obliterating ball. Okay, so they do actually have that. It's gonna be annoying for us. But not impossible to get through. We're struggling a little bit on mana here, so we'll bring in Wily Goblin. Make a treasure. They're down to 17. Hmm. Red always has the advantage on the play, so this might hurt us. We'll see. They have enough mana to go for an Ember Cleave, which is unfortunate. And there it is. Yep. <sighs> That's okay, everybody. Down to four. We don't really have much of a... Ooh, okay. Well, we had Searing Blood, but we don't have the mana to get through this. Goblin Chain Whirler, but that's not enough. <clears throat> no attacks. Yeah, I, I think we may have lost this one. That's okay, everybody. We'll just play it out. There you go, swinging. Chain Whirler blocks. Etching. So we lose the Chain Whirler. We're down to one. If they have a burn spell, we lose. Yep. Bone Crusher. Oh well, that's okay everybody. Let's go to game two. So you kind of see right there, one of the weaknesses of the deck is uh, our our sideboard options are a little clunky because we lose our devotion. But we don't really have a, much of a choice because we really need ways of just stopping our opponent. Uh, maybe we do want to bring in both Tybalt's and then drop, we drop one more Plundering Barbarian. All right, let's keep it like that. All right, so we're on the play this time. And well, we got the Ember Cleave, which is nice, but ugh, we're, we're missing lands. Mulligan. Huh, this is not much better. <laughs> I mean, again, if we get that second land, we're fine. If we don't get that second land, we're screwed. Okay, you know what? We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it, everybody. I'm going to have to put back the Fanatic. Romanop Ruin. Go. Okay. Okay, everybody. If we get those lands, we're fine. Okay, cool. We just got there. So, Wily Goblin. Make a treasure. They also have a burning tree emissary. What do they cast? Ari Rev, Skyship Raider. Alright. We did get to our third land drop, which is good. So, with that, burning tree emissary. And what do we want? I think Tybalt should come in. This builds up for us a blocker. My friend is here to help your pay. No attacks. Face the path is on. Okay, we lose a little bit on Tybalt there. That's okay. Tybalt should be a distraction for our opponent, which buys us a little bit of time. Strike. Ouch. We lose a blocker. Our opponent is going all in on taking out Tybalt. We'll let Tybalt die, but I'm going to use... That token. Give me all you've got. All right, I'll we ping out Burning Tree Emissary. So that's off the field. Okay, Chain Ruler is pretty good here, but just in case, Annex coming down first. That gives us at least a little bit more to work with. So even if our Goblin dies, we have ways of making some tokens to get back into this fight. We'll take the damage. We're down to 15. Do they have a creature to cast for Kumamo? Opponent's making a move. Yep, lightning strike. We lose Annex. Sadness. But we do get to make a couple tokens. Alright, Kumamo faces... Okay, this changes things a little bit here. We're going to play this. Our opponents. 
We're gonna now hold Chain Whirler back. So if this comes in as a 4-4 with First Strike, that's actually pretty BB versus our opponent. Our opponent has more burn spells for us. But the good news is at least they're wasting their burn spells on our creatures, which means less to face and slows down the clock. All right, they're out of cards. Okay, we need... You know, if we got our Embercleave, we'd be right where we want to be. Okay, Burning Tree Emissary, actually. We now get a beefy Shaman. Take some mana. Cash in the treasure. Hit our opponent. And no attacks. Okay, opponent. All right, opponent here is making their move. So with that, do they have the Ember Cleave? This is the turn. Okay, they make a token. Okay. All right, they're still out of stuff. We got our Nick those now, which is nice. But we're still behind. Let's swing a Burning Tree Emissary and see what they do. No blocks? Okay. This is going to be really slow here, everybody. This is, But hopefully we're going to be able to get there. Opponent. Cashing in Ramanop Ruins. Gets us down to four. We are in a slightly dangerous spot here. Annex. Again. Actually, do we cash in the Ramanop Ruins now? Full control. We then sack. Always go full control, everybody. <laughs> when you're doing stuff like this, always go full control. So that way you don't... Arena doesn't mess you up here. Closing the gap. Down to 10. Nothing. There we go. Okay. I think we now want to be where we, we're at here. Okay. So... Okay, we're swinging. Everything coming online. Turns on Den of the Bugbear. Actually, I realized maybe we should have done this for. Oh, I hope I didn't. Hope I didn't butcher this right here. Did I? Did I just punt this game away? We'll find out right now, everybody. Well, obviously don't make the same mistake I do, everybody. <laughs> so the lesson here is also six. Okay, so we kind of. Yeah, I realized we just messed up there. <laughs> Someone's gonna yell at me in the comments. Okay, uh, we can still do this, everybody. Fanatic. Down to two. Cash that in, and the festivities. Takes out the token. They're down to one, we're down to four. Unless if they have a burn spell. No, they don't! <laughs> Here I thought we just screwed it up. I can block the token, just, just because. Either way. All right, we got there, everybody. Real quick, I was going to say, don't do what I just did right now. <laughs> so what we should have done was we should have used End of the Civvies, End of Fnatic, then Swung, just to get the maximum amount. Well, there you have it, everybody. That was basically our budget mono red devotion deck for you. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Did you enjoy seeing what you saw on screen? I'm going to be honest, my final thoughts on this is this deck definitely does need to be upgraded as soon as possible. Again, as you saw, we were able to get our wins in, but there were some moments that we had a little bit of an awkward setup. But that's actually not a bad thing. There's plenty that you can use to build up and make this extremely powerful deck and make it much more formidable against our opponents. So let's actually go over that real quick for you. As you can see on screen right now, this is what I put together for myself as my version. Of course, there are a lot of other mono red devotion decks out there that are kind of going around right now. But the version, as you can see right here, is kind of what I'm going to say is the most balanced version that still lets you play everything on curve 
serve and hopefully be able to get to victory. Even if, say, you couldn't get Nick those out, this deck is also pretty fantastic on curve as is. So some of the tweaks that I've kind of will mention right now is we got rid of the spike field hazards. We now have Shatter Skull Smashings. We got rid of those Wily Goblins to put on Eidolon of the Great Revel. We, of course, have in cards such as Bone Crusher Giant, less Annex, more of a focus on Chandra's Dress to Kill. We still maintain the Chain Rollers because they're excellent. We have, of course, Torbrand. Torbrand's in a fantastic card. This stays on the field with, say, your Eidolon out or, say, you get a Goblin Chain Whirler, and it does a lot of massive damage. Mostly will help close out your game very quickly. We're going to swap out some of those Pugilists. Instead, we're going to put in Glory Bringer. This thing is an incredible card, a really big throwback. If you saw one of my older videos, I was actually surprised when this was being played, but now that I've actually gotten a chance to build this Devotion deck myself, I understand why Glory Bringer is coming back. I guess you could say it's like the old Glory days. Eh? Eh? We're going to, of course, keep the Ember Cleave. As far as your mana base, nothing else really gets modified too much, except you're going to add in some Den of the Bugbears. We'll get rid of some of the mountains. You'll add in that final copy of Nick those Shrine to Nyx. Your sideboard plan does change quite a bit here. So you're going to have a Pithing Needle to just kind of stop some Planeswalkers out there. Roiling Vortex replaces the Tybalt's. You'll now have Unlicensed Hearses, now your Graveyard Hate, a Chandra Awakened Inferno. As far as your spot removal, this is where things also get a little wacky. Trust me, it does look weird, but it does actually work. You have a set of End of Festivities, which goes great with Torbran. You'll have a Chandra's Defeat, only a single copy now, a single copy of Burning Hands and Fry, but also to kind of give you more variety, you also now have two copies of Strangle as more of a catch-all. And finally, instead, a Soul Seer, which can also turn off Indestructible on a creature or Planeswalker to ensure we can get it off the field. But hopefully, again, whether you play this version or... If you want to go back to the original budget version, you can at least see where your options are going to lie when you go forward. Of course, regardless of whichever version of this deck you do want to play, I would still say give it a try out there. If you are sick of dealing with mono green devotion decks out there, give this version a try. And I'm sure if you're a fan of burn, if you're a fan of red decks and just going wide, going big, just smashing your opponent and just overwhelming them with damage out of nowhere, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!